Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free CompTIA A plus certification training course. And this module is on adapter cards. We're going to give you an overview of adapter cards. I'm James Messer. And in this module, we're going to talk about what we need to know from test 220-601. Section 11 requires that we can identify the names, purposes, and characteristics of adapter cards. Now, before you get into this particular module, you may want to refer back to one of our previous modules on expansion slots because there's a little bit of review we're going to do right now to talk about adapter card architectures before we jump into the different types of adapter cards that you might see when you're working with computer systems. So we're going to talk not only about that review, but we'll look at some multimedia cards. We'll look at some cards that are used for input and output. We'll also look at some cards that are used for communication and networking purposes. So it's important whenever you have a box full of adapter cards or you're pulling a system apart for the first time, you're looking at an adapter card and you're wondering, what does this thing do? Now you'll have some of this you can fall back on to reference. First, let's go through a review of some adapter card architectures. If you recall, looking at PCI slots, there were a couple of different kind of PC, PCI slots that you can run into. And this uh, personal computer connection type is both for 62-bit, 64-bit, that's the larger 64-bit connection, and this 32-bit, which is the smaller one. So the larger number of bits, the longer the card's going to be. So you're going to know when you pick up an adapter card, you'll be able to tell based on how it looks what type of slots it goes into. In fact, here's a 32-bit card right here. You can see not only is it this shorter card, but it's got these slots in it based on what type of voltages are available on the motherboard that you will need to run this card. This card will support both 3.3 volt and a 5 volt on the motherboard. So not all motherboards will support all voltages. So you want to be sure the adapter card you're getting is going to match the voltages available in the PCI slots of the motherboard that you're using. Here's a 64-bit card. Again, this card will support both 3.3 and 5 volt configurations. And here's the spacer. Everything after that signifies this happens to be a 64-bit card. Now, some 64-bit cards, almost all 64-bit cards, will also run in a 32-bit slot. But if you really want to get the most out of the capabilities of the card, you want to make sure you have one that extends. If you've got a 64-bit card, make sure you got a 64-bit slot. Otherwise, you're not taking advantage of the, the full throughput available. This happens to be, be a very high-end Ethernet card. So I want to be sure that I find a slot that's got all 64 bits available for me on that motherboard. You'll see very often with graphic cards, some of the older graphics cards are using something called an AGP port, accelerated graphics port, designed just for graphics. These days, almost everything is using a standard called PCI Express, which not only applies to graphics cards, but almost anything you would ever put inside of a computer. The AGP expansion slots look very much like this one here at the top. So they're often colored differently. In fact, this one even says it's an AGP connection. You can't fit a PCI card into this. The slots and the connections, they just won't work. They look similar, but it's got different connectors on it. So there's no way you could plug it in there to be able to do that. Here's a close-up of what that particular connector looks like so that you can see it's even different in how close these different connections are spaced. So it's very particular how you plug that in. You want to be sure if you're working with these types of cards that it's plugged in exactly the way, pushed all the way into the motherboard. PCI Express slots, which we were just mentioning, there's a lot of different sizes of slots for a lot of different sizes of PCI cards. Some cards need a lot of throughput, like a video card. Some cards need only a little bit of throughput, like a parallel port or a serial port card. So there's different size slots for those particular systems. Here, for instance, is a PCI card, a PCI Express card that's used for RS-232. This is serial ports on the back of it. Look, it doesn't need much throughput through for that at all in the very fast PCI Express bus. So you'll see these funny cards, and they have these tiny, itty-bitty little connections. Ah, that's got to be PCI Express if you ever see that. Now that we understand what some of those slots look like, let's look at some adapter cards and what we would expect to see when we start working with multimedia cards, for instance. Here's a PCI Express card that's used for video. Video cards really jump out at you. Not only do they have all these funny little ports on the back side of them for the standard VGA connection or a DVI type connection, but usually video cards get very hot. There's a lot of processing that takes place on them. So they usually have their own heat sink. Some have fans connected to them. Some get really fancy. Here's an, a high-end video card. It's got art, artwork on it. It takes up two slots. It's got a fan built into it. It's got 
two DVI slots so it can do something called SLI, which is using multiple slots, video slots at the same time to produce even faster throughputs. Usually see this with high-end gamers that are having this in their system. And uh, you can see they make these fancy cards now for something like that. If you ever want to extend the audio capabilities of your system, here's an audio card you could install. This is also a PCI Express card. really jumps right out at you because it has this very small connection onto the motherboard. This is from a company called Sound Blaster. And this is an XFi card, Extreme Fidelity card, which has a ton of inputs and outputs on the back. Not only copper, but some fiber connections as well. A very easy way to extend the audio capabilities of your personal computer system. Some of the newest cards you'll see, especially in video, are these tuner cards where you can plug in your cable line. This tuner card, it's sort of like a video card because it does have some video output on it. But you can see it also has the, this coax input so you can plug it in from your cable company and perhaps use your computer as a DVR. So you can store television shows on here and go back later and watch them. Or maybe you can watch them live on a, on a picture that you can pop up on your screen. Either way, these cards really support a lot of additional capability with some of the video tuning. Now that we look through some multimedia cards, let's go through what we would do for input and output. Here, for instance, is a card that I would use to drive a SCSI hard drive. If you have a hard drive in your system that's SCSI, you're going to also need an adapter interface that also will work with that SCSI card. And so this is an adapter card for SCSI. And you can see not only does it have a SCSI port on the outside, it also has a SCSI port to use on the inside of the computer. It has some additional memory that's used for buffering. It has its own CPU. This is almost like having a computer on a card. This one happens to be a PCI card. It even has written on it PCI here at the bottom. And we know that this PCI card should go into a PCI slot that's on our motherboard. And now we'd be able to use SCSI drives inside of our computer system. Another type of card that would extend the capabilities is a serial card or a parallel card. This happens to be a card that plugs into a PCI Express slot. And it has both a serial port and a parallel port on it. Some of the newer computers, as you've probably seen, don't come with serial ports. They don't come with parallel ports. But in some cases, you may find that you have an older printer or you have a modem that you'd like to use that can only use from these serial connections. And so you need to add a card to your system that will allow you to support those ports in the back of your system. Here's a perfect example of a card that will do both for you. When we start talking about communications, this is a very critical part of our computer systems because these days almost everything's connected to the internet in some way. One of the very first and very common ways still to connect to the internet is through a modem connection. Rather slow, but it does the job. And here's what you'd see with a standard modem. They've gotten much smaller these days than in the past. This happens to be a PCI-based modem connection. And you can see there's two connections here. Usually you would plug in from the wall. So you'd have a connection going into the modem. It also has a separate connection on there. So if you wanted to plug a phone into the other side, you wouldn't have to change or get an extra coupler or, or splitter on your phone line. You can still plug it into here and have a single connection coming out from the wall. Very nice to have from a modem connection. But these days, almost everybody's plugging into the newest technologies like Ethernet to be able to get connectivity. And this is an Ethernet card. This is the same one we were looking at earlier. And this happens to be a 64-bit PCI card. And you can see that it's got an RJ45. You can sort of see that on this picture. That's an RJ45 connection on the outside of this. And you would find a motherboard then that can either support this 32 or the full 64 bits so that you can then communicate out using your Ethernet connection. Well, that's an overview of some of the adapter cards you might expect to see. We've gone through a basic architecture review so we can understand the PCI and the AGP and the PCI Express. We've looked to see what some multimedia cards might look like. We've gone through a couple of examples of what input output cards might be. And finally, we ended up with a modem and a network connection so you can understand what adapter cards you might expect to see when you start doing some communications from your system. For more videos uh, for our entire a certification training line that's absolutely free, for any of our guides or to participate in our online forums, you can visit our website at freeaplus.com.